Hey guys! So another episode in beginner's patches and this will actually be the last episode we dispatch. Uh, in the next episode we will start a new patch. But today I want to add another voice and also some delay. So let's start by adding another oscillator and this time I will use the VCO2 from VCV, which is um, quite similar to the VCO1 that we've used before, but with a few differences. So first of all, you can see that it's smaller. And also here, we don't have individual outputs for each waveform like we have here, but rather a wave um, control knob um, to control the wave shape. So let's look at it also on the scope. Um, you can see that we get the wave knob we can cross fade between the different shapes so we can start with sine wave triangle sawtooth and square at the end and again also here we have the analog and digital wave shapes so we can cross fade between them um, another difference is that we don't have a dedicated volt per octave input. But in the case of the VCO1 and the VCO2 from VCV, the FM input um, with the attenuator all the way open will act just like the volt per octave input of any other oscillator. FM stands for frequency modulation and frequency equals speech. So we can use this input to modulate the frequency of the oscillator which will modulate the pitch. Again in VCO1 and 2 from VCV it will work exactly like the volt per octave input. And we will speak about frequency modulation in a future video, but for now, let's use another, let's take this here, another quantizer. Very nice. And let's set another sequence on the third row of the sec three that we have here. So let's do something like this. I will change every step. We have seven steps all in all. So let's do something like this. Now let's send this to the quantizer. Again, pitch information is yellow. Now from there we will go to the FM input of the oscillator. Again, the FM um, CV attenuator is all the way open. Now let's send this to the mixer and listen to this also. Let's take the first voice all the way down. Let's see. Oh yeah. So this is what we have. Now we can add some more movement. We can modulate the wave shape. So it will sound like this. Very nice. Let's use another LFO. And again, this time I will use the LFO2. Again, from VCV. Um, this one is again similar to LFO1. But also here we have the wave control and the FM input. So let's send the LFO to the wave CV input of the VCO2. Again, modulation is green. Let's also look at this on the scope. Let's change the waveform of the LFO to somewhere between a sine and a triangle, somewhere like this. And we will change this also to be bipolar. So the modulation will go in both directions. Let's set the wave knob of the oscillator to the center. So now the wave knob from the modulation will be modulated to the left and to the right. Again, we have a bipolar signal. Let's lower the frequency of the LFO a bit. Very nice. You can see how the waveform is um, crossfading, is changing. Now, this uh, should sound familiar to you because it's very similar to the effect we get when using a low pass filter. The sawtooth and square waves are rich in harmonic content, unlike the sine wave and triangle. So when the oscillator crossfades to a sine wave, it sounds very similar to closing the cutoff point of a low pass filter. Let's listen also to the first sequence that we've built last time. Oh yeah. Okay, so we have another sequence that has some movement going on, but let's add even more movement by modulating the frequency of the LFO. 
with another LFO, so let's just duplicate this one here. We will send this LFO to the FM input of the first LFO again to modulate its frequency. FM stands for frequency modulation. Now let's set this, the second LFO to be unipolar. Now because it's unipolar, the frequency of the LFO2 will only go up. Let's set the modulation depth with the attenuator. Let's take it up a notch. Oh yeah. So you can hear the modulation. So again, this LFO will modulate the wave shape and the second LFO will modulate the frequency of the LFO. So we get this nice effect. Very nice. Now let's add a delay. Let's start with the first voice. And again, we will use the delay module from VCV. Now this delay module has a few controls. It has a delay time. Let me just zoom in a bit. Delay time, um, which will set the time between the initial signal and the delayed signal. We can change the feedback amount. So how many repeats we want to have. We can change the color, which will act as a sort of a filter controlling the brightness of the delayed signal. And we can change the mix. So how much of the delay we actually want to hear. And all of those have dedicated CV inputs so we can control them with voltage. Now let's put this delay after the mixer. And because we are modulating the amplitude of the first voice in channel one, we will take the output, the individual output of this channel and send it to the delay. And then from there to another channel on the mixer. Now let's take the mix of the delay all the way up. So only the delayed signal will go through since we already have this voice in the mix. So let's listen to this. Let's take the second voice out for a second. This is the first voice and now we can take, bring the delay in. Oh yeah. And again, we can change the delay time. But you will notice that this delay has no sync option. So we cannot sync it with the sequence or with the sequencer, but what we can do is calculate the amount of milliseconds needed for playing in sync with the sequencer. And there is a, a really handy tool for this in VCV from AS, which is called the BPM calculator, which is, uh, it looks like this. And now we can use the gate output of the sequencer to sync the calculator to the external input of the calculator. Again, trigger is blue. This will go to the gate input. And you can see that already the calculator calculated the BPM. <laughs> and here it says 395, an hour clock. You can see it's already set to 395. So they are in sync. And now, since they are in sync, the, uh, we can see the values of the different notes. So for example, delay time of half note will be 304 milliseconds. Of a quarter note, it will be 152 milliseconds and so on. So let's go with half note really. So let's right click the delay time knob. So we can enter an exact value and we will enter 0 0.304. Now, because we are dealing with milliseconds, so 1000 milliseconds are one second and 0 0.304 milliseconds will be a half note of delay. Oh yeah. So now we have the delay synced with our sequence. Again, we can change the feedback amount, add more repeats change the color, so all the way to the right it will be bright, all the way to the left will be dark. Let's make it bright. Very nice. Now like this we can add also delay to the second voice. So let's listen to it also. This is our second voice. We can add delay to it also. This time we will add it just after the voice itself because we are not modulating its amplitude here, so we don't need another channel. So let's take this voice directly to the delay, and from the delay, we will go back to the mixer. 
And now let's set the delay time to a different value. Let's go with a dotted half note, which is 456 milliseconds in this case. So again, right click the time knob, 0.456. Oh yeah. Now imagine this with some nice reverb on top. And that's it. As I said before, we will start a new patch next time. And like always, there will be a link in the description to this patch. Feel free to download it and take a closer look. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please hit the like button. If you enjoy what I do, consider becoming a Patreon. If you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe and hit the bell. And have a good one.